In the short period that we have together, we are going to be looking at bar graphs. Because time is limited, let's get going straight away. Let's have a look here. A bar graph is used to represent data that is sorted into categories. Display data is compared in the categories. Each bar shows the number of items in that category and there are spaces between the bars. A bar graph can be a single graph, a double graph, also known as a multiple graph, or a compound graph, also known as a stacked graph. So let's have a look. First of all, a bar graph is exactly that. When we have different bars, there's a bar, here's a bar, and there is a bar as well. Please take note that for these bar graphs, we are dealing with data that we call discrete. In other words, um, it's specific little categories that we are dealing with. Okay, in our example we're going to show, we're going to look at hamburgers and hot dogs and, and, and such like foods. Now a hamburger is a hamburger and a hot dog is a hot dog, okay? You can't have a ham dog, that's no such thing, right? So because we've got specific items, we're going to show that the graphs are not touching each other. In other words, the bars are individual, they're not touching. In our next session, we'll learn what happens when these bars touch. But when I've got discrete data, in other words, categories of data, okay, categories that cannot be uh, folded into each other or not continuous, then I've got my individual bars. Now, what I've shown you is a good old bar graph, okay? Things that you learned in grade 10 and even covered in grade 11. Single little bars. And then we're going to look later on at graphs that we know as double graphs. In other words, graphs that are touching each other, but still individual categories. Here they go. And normally that has a key. So for example, if I showed, um, I wanted to know how many students had blue eyes, how many students had green eyes, how many students had brown eyes, I would say I've got green eyes, blue eyes, and brown eyes. Okay, but I want to also make a comparison between two different categories. In other words, I could have a key and say that represents the girls and the blank represents the boys. Together, they still represent the amount of green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. So we still got our different categories, okay? We still got our discrete data, but within that discrete data, I'm making a comparison between two things. For example, girls and boys. So how many girls and boys have green eyes? How many boys and girls have blue eyes? How many boys and girls have brown eyes? Okay, let's get on with a wonderful example. Ah, before that, let's just have a look at what is a compound or a stacked graph. Now, if you look at our double graph, we've got graphs next to each other. A compound or stacked graph, we could have very similar sort of thing. But look what's happening now, okay? We're now stacking them on top of each other. So we're getting this sort of graph, and it would also have a key. We'll get on to that later on. Okay, here we go. A school tuck shop keeps track of how many hot dogs, sandwiches, salads, and burgers they sell at one break time. They have the data given in the table below. So here's the data. Hot dogs, 15. Sandwiches, 35. Salads, we sold 10. Burgers, we sold 12. Okay, not a very healthy school. Only 10 salads were sold, but lots of sandwiches. Okay, hopefully it was on brown bread or whole wheat bread and not white bread. Okay, because white bread's not good for you apparently. So, draw a bar graph to represent this data. Now, the first thing we've got to understand is this. We're drawing a bar graph. How do I know? Because the question tells me. But second of all, I also know that because a hot dog and a sandwich are two entirely different things. A sandwich and a salad is two entirely different things. A salad and a burger are two entirely different things. I'd rather eat a burger than a salad. Okay, my wife mustn't hear me say that, of course, but that is the truth. So if I said, ah, oh, salad, burger, it's the same thing. No, it's not. It's two entirely different things. So I'm going to have different 
uh, categories, okay? Single bars. Right, so here we go. So the first thing my graph is going to say is got to have a heading. And what's the heading going to be? It's going to be um, items sold at our tuck shop. Okay, so let's write that down here. I'm going to say items sold okay, at the tuck shop. At tuck shop or the tuck shop. Cool. Right. Then here I've got the number of items and here i'm going to say it's the type of food okay type of food cool now number of items i can see i've got one two three four five six seven lines how many items do i go up to i go up to 35. if i say 35 divided by seven i've got Five. So I'm going to say the number of items and I'm going to say that's five items, 10 items, 15 items, 20 items, 25 items, 30 items and 35 items. Then I look and I say I've got hot dogs and sandwiches. So I've got my hot dogs. Okay. I've got sandwiches, I'm just going to call it sand for now. Uh, I've got salads and burgers. Salads and wonderful burgers. In fact, just now I think I'm going to take a lunch break and have a nice burger. Okay, right, so here we go. Firstly, hot dogs, 15. So now I've got to draw a bar graph. So I'm going to take my ruler and folk use a ruler here and I'm going to say hot dogs I've got 15 so let's draw that down over there 15 hot dogs okay uh, cool there we go sandwiches how many sandwiches did we sell we sold 35 sandwiches people so 35 sandwiches we're drawing a line all the way up to 35 and a line all the way up to 35 and we ending the top what well, we're going to try let's see what are we doing okay drawing the line on the top okay my line does not want to draw on top it is giving me such a stubborn moment in my life here. Okay, great. We got that. Now, salads. We said there are 10 salads. So, I'm going to draw 10 salads. There is my salads, 10. And 10 salads. And across there as well. Burgers. How many burgers did we sell? We sold 12. Now, folks. 12 we can't see on our set of axes, but we know that halfway is going to be round about 13. No, 12 and a half. Because 10, 15, halfway, 12 and a half. So it's slightly lower than my halfway mark. So let's draw that quickly. Burgers just slightly lower than my halfway mark. There's my burgers. Okay. Yeah, my burgers and a line across. Cool. Oops, line went a little bit skewed there. Hey? Okay. Right. So there is my bar graph. Take note. A hot dog, sandwich, salad, burger, not the same thing. You can't get a hot witch. You can't get a sand lads and you can't get a sad burger okay it doesn't work totally different things everyone has its own category we've got discrete data so that's how my bar graph would actually work and guys the nice thing about a bar graph is this that you can see straight away what's the uh, what's popular and not only what's popular but you can see it's really really popular it doesn't come anywhere near the others look how much higher it is so we know that sandwiches are a thing we've got to keep in our tuck shop 
Okay, you can see burgers and salads. There's not much difference between salads and burgers. And so if the school um, governing body said, listen guys, you can only sell three things at your tuck shop. Well, we could get rid of salads or burgers because they're pretty close to each other. In fact, your government governing body will say, keep the salads, get rid of burgers. They're not healthy for you. Okay, but if this kind of thing, if we'd had so many burgers, then they say, hey, we want to make money here. We're going to keep burgers. But in this case, you can't really justify which one to keep and which one not to keep. But now, folk, if we looked at it like this, okay, although you can see that's a bigger number, it just doesn't make it look like, wow, it's really so much popular. You look at those numbers, you look at that graph, you can see there's a huge, huge difference. Let's have a look here. A survey of a thousand households was undertaken during 2001 to determine how many households use various electronic appliances. A survey of the same number of households was repeated during 2007. The graph below shows the results of the two surveys. So let's have a look here. We've now got how many households use radio, TV sets, video machines, DVD players, cell phones, and computers. And what you will notice is this, that we've got two columns lying next to each other. In other words, we have a double bar graph. And they're still bars because they're not, this category of radio is not touching the category of TV, which is not touching uh, the category belonging to video machines, but we're looking at two different things within the radio, and we're looking at the year of 2001 and the year uh, 2007, and so not only are we making a comparison by, between the number of TVs, radios, video machines, DVD players, computers, and cell phones, but with in each category, we're also making a distinguish, uh, distinguish, distinguished um, uh, difference between the years. Okay, so let's have a look. There's our graph. What kind of questions could they ask us? First one, what was the percentage increase in usage of TV sets between the two years? So let's have a look at our... TV sets. So when we look at our TV sets, we can see that in 2001, we had around about 55% of our population watching TV, okay, whereas in 2007, it was closer to 65%. So the difference would be 65% minus that 55%. Okay, next one. We go on and we see which appliance was used most in the households during both 2001 and 2007. So which appliance was used the most in 2001 and 2007? Folk looking at this, it was the radio. Okay, there it is. Radio was used the most in both sets of uh, households in 2001 and 2000. And seven. Right, our next question. Which appliance showed a decrease usage in 2007 compared to 2001? Okay, so which, uh, which showed a decrease in use? Let's have a look here. When I look here, I can see that radio increased, TV increased, video machine decreased, DVD player increased, um, cell phone increase, computer increase. Why did our video machine decrease? Because, folk, we no longer use video machines. People aren't going out there and buying video machines. What are they buying? They're buying DVD players. In fact, buying that good old cassette. Remember it? It would look like a little rectangular little thing. And you'd put it in your machine. The front would open up. There'd be a little lid. This whole tape would go inside and you'd watch a video. We no longer have video machines. It's now all new latest technology DVD players. So the amount of households that use it has decreased because people are not buying video machines. Why? Because you can't get them 
quite frankly. And so you can actually see how the increase in DVD players went up. Look, a huge decrease in video machines, huge increase in DVD players. All right, can you see how we can use these graphs to answer questions? Let's have a look at another question here. Question D, how many of the thousand households surveyed use cell phones during 2007? Okay, and then we're going to calculate the difference in percentage used uh, between TV sets and DVD players. All right, so first of all, how many households used? cell phones in 2007. So in 2007, we're using the dark gray. Here is our cell phone category, and it goes all the way up to round about just over the 70 mark. Can you see it? Not halfway, so I wouldn't accept 75 as our answer. I might accept 72 or 73, but I would not accept 75, because you can see quite clearly that's not in the middle of that block. So around about 72 or 73 percentage of households used cell phones in 2007. Yes, folk, that's a lot of cell phones. They have nearly three quarters of the population or, the, or households have cell phones. Wish I'd invented cell phones. Hey, geez, I'd be a multi-millionaire today. All right, next one. Calculate the difference in percentage usage during 2001 between TV sets and DVD players. So now, all we're interested is 2001 and we're looking at TV sets and DVD players. So looking at the difference in 2001, which is our white box, we can see there were 55% of households had TVs and DVD players. Uh, what's that? Just around about 25% had DVD players. So the difference, 55% minus 25%, the difference was around about 30%. Okay. Right. Now, let's have a look at another graph. Compound bar graph shows the percentage of South African children for age 7 to 13 enrolled in primary schools during 1996 and 2001. Again, folk, we're just going to explain this graph. Again, it's a double bar graph. It does look at ages. You've got age 7, age 8, age 9, age 10. You're looking at the year 1996 and the year 2007. You can see that because you have a wonderful key. So as soon as I have a double bar graph, okay, or a stacked bar graph, I've got to have a key. And that key has got to tell me what I'm looking at. So I know all the gray little bars are 1996. All these ones that I'm marking off are 1996. Whereas the other one is the year 2007. But this category is looking at seven-year-olds. This category is looking at 10-year-olds. Okay. Understand how these work? Then, finally, summary. Let's summarize our session. We need to take a break. In this segment, we've covered the following. We've explained the different types of bar graphs, single bar graphs, double, so known as multiple bar graphs, and compound, so known as stacked bar graphs. We've completed examples, drawing, and using bar graphs. Please understand that, folks. Your examiner can ask this question one of two ways. Either he says, listen, Boyke, I want you to draw me a bar graph. Or he can give you a bar graph and ask you information on it, just like the two examples that we've looked at now. Let's take an ad break, and we'll see each other shortly.